What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. Now, we are getting to the end of the year and today, before I get into my training for the week, I wanna talk about Strava. And the reason I wanna talk about Strava is because they have released their 2021 year in sport and it's, listen, if you're a numbers nerd, you are really going to love this. And if you haven't already seen it, Stay tuned because there are some pretty phenomenal numbers and I'm going to go over the important numbers so if you can't be bothered to look at the email that they send you, this is going to serve the purpose. Oh, but before I give you the numbers, I also want you to check your Strava and let me know how your year has gone because we're going to talk about averages and I want to know how you fall into the average, uh, in the global average and in the United States, if you're in the United States. Now I think each of these emails are catered to whatever country we live in, so I've only got access to the global totals and the United States totals, but perhaps if you're watching from the UK or Australia or India, your numbers are gonna be slightly different. And if you drop a comment and let me know, I'd really like to I'd really like to hear what other countries' averages are. Okay, but let's drop some huge numbers in your lap. There were 1.8 billion uploads to Strava. That is 37 million a week. Now that is a 38% increase over 2020. And 2020 was already a 33% increase over 2019, so clearly, People are getting out there. People are doing more than they used to. Strava now has 95 million athletes around the world. And all of us, all of us together, we gave out 9.6 billion kudos to each other throughout 2021. That is absolutely phenomenal. Now, the thing I like most about all these numbers is the prediction tools that it gives us. It tells us what is successful and what isn't. But before we get into that, let's, let's talk about some growth because there are a couple of things that have seen the biggest growth and they are walking and hiking. Now, walking doubled over last year. Hiking was a 1.7 times increase over last year. So what that's telling me is that more people are starting out. More people are going out and they're walking, perhaps because they're just getting into fitness. And that is fantastic news. Like as a global community, we're getting fitter. But hold on, we're gonna circle back to walking. I know this is a running channel, but the walking ties into the running. Outdoor running increased 1.3 times over last year, but indoor running increased 1.4 times. So that tells me that a lot more people are running on the treadmill this year than they did last year. Are you one of them? Now this next one doesn't really apply to me because I live in a fairly warm climate and I don't get to do much alpine or backcountry skiing, but alpine skiing and snowboarding was down 37% which isn't surprising because at the beginning of the year, when we had the ski season, a lot of the resorts were closed. But we did see an increase in Nordic and backcountry skiing to the tune of two and a half times more than 2020. Okay, so now we're getting into the good stuff. I think the stuff that can actually help you as a runner, help you individually. Uh, but first, for runners that joined Strava in 2020, they set a PR at 1.8 times greater frequency it's kind of a clunky way to say it. You know what I'm saying? 1.8 times frequency, they ran a PR. They ran or they biked a personal record in 2021 over 2020. Now, I know this is to be expected. If they just started in 2020, they're just, they're just getting their feet wet. They're getting used to it. And now 2021 rolls around and we are just, we are clocking PRs left and right. Can't wait to see what 2022 brings. So I said we we're gonna come back to walking because it does tie into the running and we're gonna go there right now. Now here in the United States, athletes that walked averaged two and a half hours per week. In the United Kingdom, they averaged three and a half hours per week. So clearly people in the UK, I don't know, they might be a bit more fit as a population. What do you think about that? Just based on walking. Anyway, they're walking for longer than in the United States. But people in Spain, they are walking up to 3.7 hours per week. And they top the list as far as the amount of walking done by athletes all around the world. So here's something to pay attention to. Female runners and cyclists are 2.4 times more likely to walk than males. But get this, runners and cyclists that also walk are 16.1% more likely to still be active six months down the line. So I'm not sure if that relationship goes both ways, but it certainly doesn't hurt to try it out. So if you don't already walk and you're worried about keeping a fitness habit, you need to start walking. The numbers don't lie. There are 95 million athletes that have been surveyed to get this number. And 16% is no joke. If you are a runner and you wanna continue on into the future, throw some walking in and you are 16% more likely to continue to be a runner. Those are numbers I can get behind. So I also really enjoy seeing the stats that show how weather affects our activities. So let's take Texas for example. So early in 2021, Texas experienced a really severe winter storm. Now it was only for a couple of days, but during those couple of days, outdoor activities were dropped 
by 57%. People in Texas just didn't want to get out in that cold weather. Now, for the couple of days that Hurricane Ida hit Louisiana, outdoor activities dropped by 40%. Probably not surprising there. Maybe it's not running or biking in a hurricane. Probably isn't the safest bet. And when the storm Philomena hit Madrid in early January, outdoor activities dropped by 69%. So, Obviously, Madrid, they're not used to those super cold temperatures and they just decided to stay in until that storm passed. And one last stat that I wanna share with you and that was the flooding that occurred in Manila in July, 2021. Now, with all that flooding, the outdoor activities from the Filipinos only dropped 20%. That is pretty impressive. Flooding is not something that you can really work around. So I've gotta give props to the Philippines for overcoming that adversity and still getting out and taking care of business. Only 20% drop in outdoor activities. Total club members on Strava increased by 37% over 2020, which is a great time to bring up that if you haven't already, why don't you consider joining my Strava club, the Kind Happy Run Crew. I'll put a link in the show notes below. So I'm only gonna talk about running right now, but as a globe, all of us, all of us together, this whole running community, we logged 2.4 million miles running. The average global run was 3.9 miles, with males running an average of 4.1 miles and females running an average of 3.4 miles. In the United States, we ran 425 million miles as a nation. And the average run was 3.7 miles with males clocking an average of four miles and females clocking an average of 3.4 miles. I want you to do a little calculation and let me know how many miles you ran on average. While I didn't actually put this stat together for myself before this video, I did kind of do an average of how many miles I've run per day. And at the filming of this video, I have run an average of 8.25 miles a day, which is about 13 and a quarter kilometers. Now, of course, I've taken some days off, but that just means I've had to run longer on other days. Which brings me right into my training week. I actually had a pretty good week, a really good week in the beginning of the week because I ran a marathon on Sunday last week. So Monday and Tuesday were just completely off. No running. Had to let these legs heal because you know what? They were pretty sore and as they should be well, after running a marathon. But on Wednesday, I did decide to take it out. I ran 10.1 miles, very easy. Now I should preface that uh, my, all my runs last week were very, very easy. And Thursday, Thursday I did knock out another 10 miles, very easy. It was nice and warm. And although I was taking it easy, my legs were still sore, but I still broke the sweat. Keeping with the pattern of the week, Friday was 7.5 miles, very easy. Then I followed up one easy run with another easy run. On Saturday, I ran 7.6 miles, but it wasn't all easy. I threw in some strides this day. I did eight 30 second repeats just to get my legs turning over and really just to see how I felt after that marathon, which was at that point about six days in the past. And everything felt pretty good. Although getting my legs turning over a bit faster was a tad more difficult than I expected based on how I felt on my easy run. But still, I am getting better. I am healing from the marathon. Everything's heading in the right direction. I closed out the week with Sunday. I ran 7.5 miles and I did run over to the mall and I just ran up and down the car park. The very slight incline just to just to get some hills into my legs. That's how we do it. That's how I wrapped up the week. The total of this week was 42.73 miles, which is a shade under 68 kilometers. I did knock out about 117 miles on the Peloton, which is about 189 kilometers. So all in all, pretty good week. Legs are still feeling a bit heavy from the marathon, but I am feeling better than I was at this time last week when my legs were absolutely trashed. Don't forget to let me know about how your week went in the comments below. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.